specialty introduce Eric Kalkgrin on the constructive exploitation of Erasmus State or we said that. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks very much to the organizers for, for uh, allowing me to speak about this uh, paper which has been published in BSL recently. And I think uh, quite a few of you have heard earlier versions of this talk's talk, but there will be some news given to you. Okay, so we are going to make a constructive examination of Russell's uh, ramified type theory. And um, of course, uh, Russell's theory from 1908 uh, was classical. And it had in the first version a ramification of, uh, of types, of the power of types. There was uh, some weaknesses in when trying to use this uh, theory. In particular, there were a proliferation of uh, uh, real numbers of different levels corresponding to the, to the ramifications. <coughs> So, uh, one solution was uh, given by Russell himself by the uh, reducibility axiom, uh, which uh, collapsed uh, this uh, ramification, uh, at least from an extensional point of view. And there were several improvements by, uh, by taking away this ramification by, by, by Ramsey and uh, finally Church and others. Um, so, uh, question is, can we save uh, the original idea of, uh, of Russell's uh, ramified type theory and still have it uh, useful for formalizing mathematics? Well, if, uh, uh, well, if we go to intergenistic logic, take a completely different philosophical point of view, perhaps, uh, going from logicism to intuitionism. Uh, we can do this in, the, in fact. We formulate this uh, ramified uh, type th theory of types, type theory, on the basis of intuitionistic logic. And we introduce a different <coughs> reducibility axiom, which will be weaker from an from, uh, intuitionistic point of view, certainly. But with classical logic, it is actually equivalent to the original one. So we call this uh, new theory intergenistic <coughs> ramified type theory. And how do we test or examine it for, for constructiveness? And one, one method is to interpret it in, in a uh, constructive type theory, like modular type theory. And we will, I will indicate how this is done. And uh, th this theory is quite Quite powerful. It supports the development of Bishop-style constructive mathematics. Uh, I would guess that uh, Bishop and Bishop's book would be uh, possible to formalize uh, using such a system because it's very similar to some. Because its consequences are similar to other systems, as we will see. Okay, and also another purpose. Uh, is to look for a natural notion of predicate totals. So if, church, uh, if the intuitionistic version of church theory corresponds to toposes, this could be a suggestion for predicate toposes. There are many suggestions for this already. Uh, let's come to that. Okay, so that's the main, main points here. Uh, here's an overview. Uh, first we look at something which is well known for Many of you here. Uh, what the issue of predictivity is quite different if you view it from a classical or intuitionistic point of view. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what? Well, let's uh, see the original problem. Uh, that was uh, the unrestricted comprehension by Frege. From any property, you can form the set of Elements satisfying this property. And of course, you get Russell's paradox uh, immediately from this. Uh, so that's uh, too impredictive. 
there's another one which we still keep in set theory, that's the separation axiom. And of course, this has uh, some well known problems if you allow this to quantify over subsets of A or to have, again, a vicious circle uh, which, uh, which is e predictive in On the other hand, functions. Uh, if you have sets x and y, do all functions uh, from x to y exist as a set? In classical systems, this is um, equivalent to assuming the power set by characteristic functions, of course. Uh, in intergenistic system, this is not, not so serious uh, uh, because that characteristic functions would only represent the desirable subsets. So, in, in uh, realizability interpretations of what kinds, uh, you can see that this forms a, a set and there is no predictivity problem in, uh, at all. Okay, so Russell's theory of types. Uh, I'm taking this 1908 paper as, as the introduction point of that. That must have been worked out. There, okay, so uh, this is quite uh, difficult to read for modern readers, so there have been uh, rational or modern reconstructions of it using lambda calculus notation, and one very good paper about this is by Kamaldin, Lam, and Elephant, Types of Logic. Uh, uh, so, uh, we will use their reconstruction. So, what is, uh, what is the simple First, what is Church simple type theory? Uh, you have a type of individuals, which are the natural numbers. For types A and B, you can form the product type. And for any type, you can form the type of propositional functions on A. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the simple, simple types. And for any proposition, you can introduce uh, a propositional function which would correspond to an abstraction. Uh, uh, okay, so in this case, there is no restriction on this proposition, so we can make these impredicative uh, uh, constructions as we have in the first warning uh, um, page. Right, so this is, should be rather well known. Uh, so the ramified types, uh, were introduced by, by Russell uh, to avoid vicious circles of this kind. Uh, it's a certification of the propositions. Uh, so for each type, we have a stratified sequence of power sets uh, like this. And you can imagine if you start with natural numbers or the ra rational numbers here, uh, there might a priori be different uh, levels of, of real numbers. And, and that's quite unsatisfactory. You want the, the real numbers to be to be uh, complete uh, and uh, uniquely uh, unique up to isomorphic. Okay. Uh, so, what is the formation rules for, uh, for introduction rule for sets in this case? Uh, well, it looks uh, similar, but we must take care that we never quantify over any higher or equal. Uh, to k power sets in this uh, form. So it's required that uh, this contains only quantifiers over individuals or over power powers where n is less than k. So it quantifies over objects already constructed or given. So this is a predictive uh, system. All right. So uh, we introduce ramified type symbols by, by adding this ramified version of the power. And otherwise it looks the same as the, the, the simple type here. Okay, so here are examples of ramified types. So there is, uh, according to this modern reconstruction, only this one would be a, a ramified in, in Russell's style. We can also interpret this, this one quite naturally with Type theory, so in okay. So uh, 
Yes. So that's how it how it looks. And uh, then you are looking for the formulas, and uh, you need only to take care to keep track of, of the level or the uh, level of the power types here. Uh, make sure that the, this is lower than or equal to n in, in the class of formulas. And the restricted uh, comprehension principle that looks like this. So for the formula of level of the n, this is uh, a set. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, the reducibility axiom of Russell can be formulated in this way that we can, for any set. Uh, of level n, same power, and any set of level n, subset of A of level n, there is a subset of level 0, which is extensionally equal to it. So it's, it collapses to all these stratifications. And yeah, so one may as well consider uh, simple type theory as was argued closely after. Okay, Russell's theory still has some distinctions between the intention, on the intentional level, uh, between uh, these uh, subsets which can be of philosophical interest. Yeah, and uh, so what, uh, how can we replace this by something predicative? Uh, uh, that can make the world theory useful. The idea uh, will be uh, made, uh, essentially to to allow this only for functional relations, not to, not for subsets, not for total relations, but precisely functional relations. Uh, and we can motivate this by by using the constructive axiom of choice, actually. Uh, and one theory in which this is uh, valid is, is modular type theory. I will not go through it, uh, uh, of course. Uh, there we take a standard formulation of modular type theory. Uh, the important thing is that we have a cumulative hierarchy of type universes. Uh, contains some basic types to begin with. Every level is closed under sigma pi. And those will be the quantifiers. Uh, yeah, I will be brief about this theory here. And we have the, here's the <coughs> translation between uh, uh, logical notions and type theoretic notions. So we, we pass freely between these two. Uh, an interesting feature is also that we have infinite disjunctions and conjunctions where this can be can vary. Okay, so we will use this uh, for for our interpretation. The theory uh, it has a set universes, uh, and yeah, here again is the rules. So, uh, what will we use to interpret the types? We will go to to setoids. These are basically the, the notions of sets uh, used by Bishop in his uh, seminal book. So a setoid uh, is simply a type together with an equivalence relation. And uh, functions uh, between such should respect the quality, we call them extensional functions. So um, when we base this on modular type theory, it forms a good category of constructive mathematics. It supports several important principles like the axiom of unique choice, dependent choice, axis presentation axiom, etc. And we will also need stratified setoids. Uh, so this looks uh, uh, like that. Uh, so there are two things determining uh, that are specified with the setoid. You have to specify the universe where the type lives in, and the universe where where the equality condition lives in. So again, we use propositions as types. To like this. And essentially, uh, we use uh, two things here: 
When these are equal, we call them satellites of level M. And when uh, the type level is one higher, then we call it a classoid or new name, M classoid. Yeah. So these classoids and satellites have the, the replacement property uh, as characterized the differences. Okay, so now I see. So, uh, yeah, so uh, if you start here, we have a standard type, say R0. So it's the axle model of CZF forms a zero classoid, and the propositions of level N, the logical equivalents, are N classoids. So we will use them in, in our interpretation of the verified theory. So we can then consider extensional propositional functions of level N as functions from, from a setoid, which is extensional, into this propositions on level n, and that's an n class of it. So it, it is not an n set of it, uh, it where we have simple fact. All right. Okay, and then you have to uh, go to the usual uh, set of uh, um, troubles, uh, uh, introduce all the constructions. Uh, they look a bit complicated, but not already quite straightforward. And then in this uh, modeling, we will have to count uh, the, the levels rather carefully to, to obtain the, the proper actions. Okay, so I will not go through this. Uh, so here's the model then of uh, the ramified types. You start with the basic types. <coughs> and uh, the product type is interpreted by Cartesian product. And the power type is this power construction we have. So extensional uh, propositional functions into omega 1. So it gives a hierarchy of, of types which satisfy the extensionality axioms. And we have that any type of level Rn is an n, n set or Uh, to actually use uh, theories like uh, mm. simple type theory and, and Russell's type theory, you are not working with uh, only with, with these these basic types, but you are essentially working with elements of the power of a power type, and uh, this has been called local sets by by Bell, for instance. So it's a type together with the, uh, with the subsets. So, so here you see an example. You have, here's the underlying type, and here's the, the subset of that type. And then you can, uh, can define uh, what is local, so what is local uh, sets of this kind, and then maps what is uh, the structure. So these are almost as simple as uh, the, the types used in, 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 uh, in predicative topos logic. Uh, well, we have this annoying indices, of course, but at least we do not have dependent types. So, uh, so the syntax is specified uh, separate from, from the semantics very clearly. So this, uh, OK, and then you can go about uh, uh, going from these local sets to setoids, and this is essentially when we are going to interpret the reducibility axiom. So we take uh, two local sets, and uh, we have a setoid which represents all these maps. Uh, Indexed by okay, indexed by, by these functions. So that's the graph corresponding to f. So by the unique axiom of unique choice, we can actually find for any uh, local set map some uh, function that using the axiom of unique choice. Really, in the background we use axiom of, uh, the axiom of choice of, of type theory. 
Okay, so in a sense, we have reduced this f here to, to, uh, to this level. And putting all this together, we can have a, a reducibility principle for, for functions. Now this is the main axiom. Uh, so for, for any two local sets, remember they consist of an underlying uh, uh, type uh, together with a, a subset of that. And they both have, have levels, right? Uh, well, then we can find some level. We can compute it from a, the levels of A and B. So that for any map on any level, there is a map G at uh, level L, so that they are essentially equal. <laughs> so this would not uh, work uh, predictively in, in a classical setting as, uh, well, we, are, we would have this reducibility for characteristic function, and that would give you the full comprehension principle. So it's essential to use intuitive logic. In this case, and we can go on uh, do a lot of standard constructions, even in this. Uh, some, uh, yeah. One trouble is that you have always to, to keep uh, track of, of the levels, and you have to make some calculations, perhaps, to show uh, when uh, from M and N, if they are sets and a sub and an equivalence relation, where is the quotient subset? Okay, you can calculate it. There is, it's at level max and k and mnk. Okay, so it looks like that. It's a bit troublesome. Okay, so now the intrinsic gamified theory. Mm -hmm. I will summarize it here. It's uh, defining axioms for gamified with comprehension terms as we had before. There's an ex extensionality axiom. There is full induction, arithmetical axioms, and there is this reducibility for function spaces. And yeah, no uh, vicious in predicativity. Uh, and this uh, last scheme is yeah, it's benevolent thanks to the VHA implementation. All right, so this theory is presumably not so strong uh, as it stands here. Uh, Something like arithmetic, perhaps. Uh, a question, natural question is: Is the background model is the model of type theory with the, unit, with the infinitely many universes, and that's uh, known to be of strength gamma, gamma north. Uh, so, what uh, further maximum should we add to this theory to, to reach the same same strength there? Uh, one suggestion uh, I think is one can get from. Uh, Michael Rautian's paper on, uh, on the strength of the superuniverse, where he considers a uh, an intuitionistic uh, <coughs> or a uh, axiom of replacement. Uh, we haven't investigated this, but it may 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 well be in the last few sections that are needed to, to reach. It would be very nice because it's, it's a, a exhausted gamma knot with some amendments that we have that fit. Right, okay, we can consider uh, some uh, additional uh, axioms that are true. Uh, actually, fullness is also true. I don't know if I'm embarrassed about this. Uh, uh, one, uh, well, it doesn't give as good numbers as the as the exponentiation. Right? That's the problem. We can have dependent choice, and we can extend the generalized inductive definitions. If we start with a type theory which has uh, W types, uh, yeah, just a, it looks rather scary. Dependent choice, a lot of indices, and you have to do some computation of the levels here. Uh, yeah, and even more scary is the inductive definitions and axle. So you have these uh, infinitary rules. Uh, you're considering s defining subsets that are closed under these infinitary rules, and you have to specify all the components with these local sets. And 
really quite complicated uh, calculation of the where this uh, actual closed set appears. And we call this the principle of generalized definition. It can be modeled by, by W types and continuous operators and the like. I will skip this. Uh, right. Yeah, here's the exponential construction also. Uh, some calculations. Yeah, uh, I have a student working on uh, on studying the, these axioms and see what what kind of notion of predicative topos you might obtain from this. And uh, actually, he has shown that it is, is <coughs> at the presentation. There's no paper yet, uh, but it, it forms the, the natural notion of local natural category of local sets forms a local Cartesian close pre topos with W types. That's uh, on a nice definition of predicate topos. Uh, right. Okay, so uh, um, how much time do I have? It's run out. Yeah. Run out, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, sorry. Okay, so what's the pros and cons of this uh, theory? Uh, right, uh, well, here's the list of it. Uh, it's similar to topos logic, predictive and ramified. It is uh, rather straightforward to model and doesn't require the W types. It has a simpler type structure than modular type theory. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, Well, there are drawbacks also that we cannot have, and well, we need to obviously not treat big universes or things like that. Um, so, uh, a question uh, is, uh, can we do this theory in the modern proof system? It is uh, two, two slides. So, there are two, two, uh, two well-known uh, assistants, uh, proof assistants. The Cox system and the Agda, they all use, both use infinite hierarchy of type universes, and uh, each universe level is closed on the strong principles for inductive definitions. Uh, so they treat these uh, levels in, in slightly different ways. Uh, 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 and if you look at, in Cox in, with the modern, modern version with their uh, Universe polymorphism. You can you can write down something like this, which look completely uh, illegal. <laughs> yeah, but it finds out that you mean actually different type levels here. So it mean you mean this, thing, and the, this level is higher than both of those. So if we use Koch, we can with these uh, indices, we can actually verify this. Uh, uh, reducibility axiom, if we prove it, if, well, we can prove it in a stupid way, then it will not work, but we can prove it using type theoretic axiom of choice. Then here you see the G, that's the reduced level, and you can, you can uh, then find out, looking at the constraints, that this I is independent of, of, of the J's. Right? So that's uh, that's how you can do it. And it's an a question perhaps to uh, expose on. Could you uh, use this uh, constraints on universe levels to give a completely a version of IRT where you don't have to see these indices unless you do something very stupid? <laughs> so uh, could we implement uh, IRTT with level constraints instead of explicit levels.
By your wish to reach Canvas Zero. <coughs> Sorry, why? By your wish to reach Canvas Zero. Yeah, because uh, that's more than Yeah, it's because the, the, it's because the, 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 sta the standard model is based on, on a theory which has the strength of gamma to add to the source. Yeah. Morning. So I have a fairly unfair question. <laughs> so Dak Norman and I have shown that even with only intuitionistic logic, uh, uh, if you take two predicative things, namely a realizer for the Lindner Lewis lemma and Fairfermann's mu, and you throw them together, you get pi 1 1 comprehension, mm -hmm. even if you have uh, only intuitionistic logic. Mm -hmm. So but presumably, uh, the Lindner Lewis, a realizer for Lindner Lewis, would somehow fit into your hierarchy, as would fit from us, but somehow, uh, if you put them together, boom, uh, everything explodes. So it might be interesting to look at. Yeah. No, also, uh, that also shows the, it's not that vicious or self-referential, in hmm. my opinion, this entire predicative business. No, thank you. Eric, in, in Russell's original system, it was intentional, and then the reducibility introduces some amount of extensionality because the reduced function is only essentially equivalent to the original one. But in your system, you're putting in extensionality right from the start. Is that because you only have the reducibility for functions and not for all properly yes, functions? That's right. That's right. And, and the justification for doing it is that in the setoid construction, you get it anyway? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So let's thank our speaker again.